Saints, hold on, it's gonna be alright. And good day, and welcome to the Bottom Line Program. My name is Elder Manuel Wiggins. I'm the co-host for the show. Unfortunately, Elder Evangelist Mother Sarah Bicker Hopkins, better known as Mother Hopkins, is home resting. And she asked me to host and fill in today, so that's why I'm here, along with the Honorable Mayor Brown. And as all shows start, she always start off with prayer, because prayer is important. So let us pray with heads bowed and heart humble. Heavenly and most gracious Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Knowing, O oh God, is not by power, not by might, but it is by your spirit, saith the Lord. You said, God, in your word, in all of our ways, if we just acknowledge you, you shall direct our path. And we acknowledge that we need your direction in our walk, in our talk, in our decision making. We can't do anything without you. We don't even want to try. We pray, God, a special blessing for all the audience that's listening on today. We ask, O oh God, that you bless their household. We pray that you cover our children, O oh God, with your presence. We pray that you be with every single parent and let them know they're not single as long as you're on board. We pray a special blessing upon our mayor. We ask, O oh God, that you crown him with wisdom and put the right people around him, O oh Lord. We ask that your presence be felt throughout this city and during this broadcast. And we ask this blessing in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. And let's say amen. Amen. And then she told me normally they start off with the song. And the mayor told me that normally there's a singer. And I told him I was going to be the singer today. <laughs> <laughs> amen. I come to the cross seeking mercy and grace. I come to the cross where you died in my place. Out of my weakness and into your strength, humbly I come to the cross. Your arms are open, you call me by name. You welcome this child that was lost. You paid the price for my guilt and my shame. Jesus, I come. Jesus, I come. Jesus, I come to the cross. Amen. Amen. I'm going to introduce our mayor of, they called it the city of good neighbors, the Honorable Mayor Byron Brown. Welcome to the show, Mayor Brown. It's good to be with you, Elder Wiggins, and uh, Mother Hopkins would be very proud of you. Uh, you certainly are known in the community as a man of deep faith and certainly as a prayer warrior, uh, someone who uh, works with violence prevention and youth throughout our community. Um, and so it's uh, wonderful to see you in, in, in this light. Uh, and uh, I was looking for the singer, and you too are the singer. <laughs> oh, you, are, you, you are an excellent singer. It's oh, great God to be you. with you on Amen. the program. Amen. Thank you so very much for taking time out of your busy schedule. And we're going to start off with, of course, the billion dollar question. Okay. <laughs> and we all know what the billion dollar question is, Mayor Brown. Um, as the Governor Cromo had pledged in this area, in the state of the state address, a billion dollars. Can you talk to us about that billion dollar plan? Uh, yes, I can. Uh, first, uh, let me uh, just say, 
I was very thankful, very appreciative of the governor's focus on the city of Buffalo. Uh, the governor, of course, wants to improve the economy of the entire state. Buffalo is the second largest city in the state of New York, and the governor feels strongly that if the state economy is going to improve, uh, then the economy of Buffalo needs mm -hmm. to improve. Uh, the governor uh, had a very bold uh, state of the state message, uh, and since he mentioned that billion with a B for <laughs> Buffalo, there has been a uh, significant conversation everywhere from Brooklyn uh, to <laughs> Buffalo, uh, from Nassau County to Niagara County. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody seems to want a part of that billion dollars. But the governor said that he was uh, very focused on the city of Buffalo, um, that uh, Buffalo had experienced some significant challenges, and this is now a time of great opportunity for our city. His vision was for something big to happen. Either we would identify um, a major corporate entity, one or two, and try to recruit that new corp that corporate entity to Buffalo, mm -hmm. uh, which would create new jobs, a massive amount of new jobs, or we would identify an industry cluster uh, that um, makes sense for this community uh, where we could get maybe uh, mid-sized businesses in that uh, industry, industry cluster mm -hmm. that would create new jobs, a mass amount of new jobs for the residents of the city and the region. I think the governor is talking about hundreds of jobs, okay. if not thousands of jobs, and he sees a multiplier effect of five. Mm -hmm. So he wants this $1 billion to leverage an additional $5 billion in private sector investment. Okay, so tell me this, is there a time frame in which this money is available, and if so, how long? Well, um, I don't know if there's any set time frame. Of course, uh, the governor is in the second year of a four-year term. Uh, he is incredibly popular. Uh, polling uh, just came out today showing his approval ratings uh, in the 70 uh, percentile. Uh, he has become recognized very quickly in just one year as probably the most popular, effective government governor yeah. in the entire nation. So Governor Andrew Cuomo is riding high. He wants, he wants us to do it right in this community. Uh, he sees that money going through the Western New York Regional Economic Development Council, uh, a process that he set up uh, last year for economic development money to move into communities across the state. Uh, that Regional Economic Development Council in Western New York is chaired by the president of UB, Satish Tripathi, mm -hmm. uh, and Howard Zemsky, a businessman in the community, uh, who has developed the Larkin Building. Um, the two of them have worked with um, business leaders, uh, government uh, leaders, union leaders, community-based organization leaders uh, to develop a plan for the economy of this community. And last year, Buffalo got the largest award mm -hmm. through the regional economic development process through the state. Uh, the governor felt that that was a good structure for this billion dollar commitment to go through. Uh, so I don't think there's any definite time okay. frame, but at the same time, this is a challenge grant. Mm -hmm. So if we don't come up with a new idea for new business mm -hmm. or business that's here that's doing something new and substantial mm -hmm. that will create new jobs uh, that will benefit Buffalo and the entire region, we probably don't get this billion dollars. Okay, and you know, that was gonna be one of my questions concerning if there was a business that exists right now, could they also qualify? And if so, how would they go about it? I know you're still on the ground planning of it, and I, I'm sure 
there was a lot of people was Buffalonians <laughs> when they mentioned the billion, all right. of a sudden everyone wanted to be in Buffalo. Um, so, and so that's my question concerning some of the businesses that's here now. Yeah, uh, the Regional Economic Development Council had a meeting, uh, an emergency meeting about a week ago, uh, and we talked about that, um, you know, existing business versus bringing a business from someplace else in or an existing business starting something new. Um, what we feel is the governor wants us to come up with the greatest idea that will have an impact on the economy of Buffalo and Western New York. So we are taking the position that existing business that is in, in a significant growth sector in Buffalo and Western New York, New York should not be ruled out. Okay. Give you an example. Mm -hmm. So the Buffalo Niagara Medical Campus, growing by leaps and bounds, over 8,500 people uh, work on the medical campus now. The projection is in another uh, three to five years, that employment will double to over 17,000 people working wow. on the uh, uh, medical campus. Okay. Um, uh, UB mm -hmm. is bringing its medical school downtown. UB was able to secure a $35 million grant to fast track the process of bringing the medical school to downtown Buffalo on the Buffalo Niagara Medical Campus. So those are things that we can build on. So health sciences, life sciences, uh, health care, uh, that is a cluster where there's significant growth in this community where potentially it makes sense uh, for us to try to focus this billion dollars. But a lot of research mm -hmm. is going to be done. Uh, there are going to be a lot of people in this community uh, that are going to be working on that issue. Um, we're going to get ideas that come to us uh, and through that Western New York Regional Economic Development Council process, we will evaluate all of the ideas, all of the research, all of the suggestions that, that come through. Okay, great. Now, since you mentioned downtown, uh, the city's also in line for funding for the cars back on Main Street. Can you give us an update on that project? Well, um, Elder Wiggins, I know that Mother Hopkins and you have long histories mm -hmm. in the city of Buffalo. Uh, and many people will say that when the light rail rapid transit system went into uh, downtown Buffalo and was installed in main, on Main Street, it killed a lot of business yes. mm -hmm. and a lot of retail along Main Street and in downtown Buffalo. Before then, we had a really thriving uh, commercial area along Main Street. Right. There were hun literally hundreds of businesses mm -hmm. that went out of business as that light rail was being installed. So for some time, one of the goals and ambitions of this community has been to reopen Main Street to vehicular traffic where the rail goes above ground. Uh, we recently were very successful in receiving a federal uh, grant, um, it's a $15 million grant, uh, which will give us the ability with money that we've already been able to secure to open up the 500 block of Main Street mm -hmm. and Lower Main Street, where Lower Main Street meets the waterfront, where we're investing all that money for waterfront development. We have already done the 700 block of Main Street, and we have money in hand for the 600 block of Main Street. And what we see happening through uh, this significant infusion of, of money and dollars is new residential investment mm -hmm. on Main Street and new commercial investment on Main Street, hopefully a return of retail uh, to Main Street mm -hmm. and downtown Buffalo and a more vibrant downtown in a few years than we've seen in decades. Okay, and that was going to be another one of my questions. What is the projected end date to make that to come to fruition? Uh, the projected end date uh, would be in an, a, a range of three to five years mm -hmm. to completely uh, um, 
reopen Main Street to vehicular traffic. At that point, Main Street will be one of the most complete streets in the entire region. So it'll have the rail, it'll have car, it'll have pedestrians, it'll have bicycles. So it will be a complete street that will be welcoming uh, to residential investment, mm -hmm. commercial investment. So five years from today, the entire project should be completed and we okay. should see a dramatically different Main Street in downtown Buffalo. Okay. You know, we've been talking about Main Street in downtown, but there's also some other things going on. Once you bring us up to speed of what's going on, the excitement at Martin Luther King Park, I believe that that project should be finished this summer? Yeah, uh, yes, it should. Um, the, the Humboldt Basin or the Martin Luther King Park uh, waiting pool uh, has been a white elephant again for decades. Uh, it hasn't been really utilized properly. People think back to the days when they used to be able mm -hmm. to swim there and it was just a community-wide attraction that uh, drew people from all across the community. Well, we're making an investment of almost four million dollars uh, to make that a facility uh, that can be used year round. So in the summertime, uh, it'll be a wading pool uh, that people can enjoy. They can go in, mm -hmm. they can get wet, they can cool off uh, from the hot sun. Uh, in the springtime, it will be a reflecting pool so you can sit out and, and meditate and, and read and exercise. And in the wintertime, it'll be able to be frozen over so that People can ice skate. I remember those days. <laughs> do you do you remember, oh, those, yes, days I remember when, those days when yes. people used to do that yes, in Martin yes, Luther yes. King Park? Yes. So this year um, that project will be completed and all of those uses will be available ag again in Martin Luther King Park, an investment of about four million dollars. Okay, great. Now also, I um, noticed a lot of green bins in the area for recycling and I, I must admit, the first time I ever recycled was when I got the green bin. How was that pro project coming You know, along? that project is going great. That project has been led by uh, Steve Stepniak, our public works commissioner. Uh, and uh, Ray Moore Nosworthy, who is a special assistant to the commissioner, Paul Sullivan, who is our director of uh, uh, sanitation. Um, what we wanted to do with that project is increase recycling because as we increase our recycling rate, we mm -hmm. can save money for the taxpayers in the city of Buffalo. We can be uh, more protective of our environment uh, and we can strengthen uh, the resources of city government. Mm -hmm. So you said the first time you recycled was when you got that green yes, bin? it was a lot easier. Well, we've seen that with a lot of people. Yeah. And so uh, in the very first um, garbage district that we brought the green bins into, recycling, we expected recycling uh, to, to double from 8% to 16%. It shot up uh, by 55%. Wow. It was a 55% increase. Uh, what we have tried to do since I've been mayor, since mm -hmm. 2006, is hold the line on the garbage user fee, uh, which was established now um, about uh, 12 years, 11 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and through this program, uh, we should save about a million dollars a year wow. on how we dispose of, of garbage. Uh, less garbage will go to the landfill. Um, uh, we now accept more materials to be recycled. So the project is growing, going great. It's been fantastic. The comments from all of the sections of the community that have gotten the green mm -hmm. bin so far have been off the charts. Good, good, good. Now, now Mr. Mayor, now we know that you're the chairman of the Joint School of Reconstruction. That project is mm -hmm. a billion dollar upgrade of city schools. Can you talk about the progress of that? The progress has been fantastic. Uh, the uh, Joint School Construction Board and the reconstruction of the city schools has been in place now for about nine years. Mm -hmm. uh, that has gone phenomenally well. Over a 10 year period of time, a billion dollars uh, was to be invested in the reconstruction of the city schools. 
uh, to date, about uh, 30 schools, uh, 30 plus schools have be been uh, renovated. Uh, the project has grown to about a billion three at this point. Mm -hmm. And now those school buildings in the city of Buffalo have the, some of the finest resources, technology in the entire, not only in the entire region, but in the entire state of New York. Wow. So that, that is one of the pieces in the puzzle to improving student achievement. We now have school buildings that kids want to be in. Mm -hmm. We have school buildings that are, that are safe. We have school buildings that have facilities and technology that are second to none. Mm -hmm. So this project is going phenomenally well. Uh, we have another uh, year uh, of uh, reconstruction to do, probably about a year and a half, uh, but it has uh, uh, really met expectations very well in terms of giving our children in the city of Buffalo some of the finest school buildings in the entire state of New York. Wow, so they have no reason now they can even go to college for free also if they do what they're supposed to do. Yes. Now fortunately we've been having a mild winter but we know where we live at and we know that that's not gonna always be. Can you talk to us about the city's snow fighting plan? Uh, we update our snow fighting plan every year. We try to invest in new snow fighting equipment uh, every year. Uh, we have 68 pieces of snow fighting equipment, uh, which is pretty significant. Uh, we have computerized salt spreaders on every truck. Uh, we have uh, uh, GPS systems on every truck, so we can tell now where every truck is during a snowstorm, what streets have been plowed, where salt has been uh, thrown. Because the winter has been so mild, mm -hmm. we've saved close to a quarter of a million dollars uh, mm -hmm. that, was, that was already budgeted. That's great when mm -hmm. you can save that kind of money. Now, we've had a few minor bouts of snow. We know more snow is coming, <laughs> uh, but our city public works department uh, is ready. Uh, our equipment is in great shape. Uh, we have new equipment that's more maneuverable. Uh, we um, have been branded nationally uh, as hard work, mm -hmm. high tech, because we have some of the most experienced, hard working snow fighters in the nation, and we have one of the most uh, technic technologically advanced uh, snow fighting plans and snow fighting systems in the nation as well. Okay, great. Now you mentioned earlier a little bit about the waterfront development because there's a lot of things going on down there and if you haven't been down there, you really need to go. Can you bring us up to speed or what else do we have to look for? Well, Elder Wiggins, you hit the nail on, on the head. Um, for folks who haven't been there, they need to go. Last summer, there were over 300 different events on Buffalo's waterfront. Uh, over 400,000 people attended the waterfront. This year, there will be close to 400 different events. Uh, the expectation is between maybe 500 to 600,000 people visiting the waterfront. We just voted to invest another $23 million to continue the waterfront development process, uh, which will enable us to uh, install the historic replica canals. So we will be able to install the canal system that mirrors what the Erie Canal coming into Buffalo looked like uh, historically many years ago. Wow. We will also be adding uh, bridges uh, which are historic in nature and tow paths uh, that people can uh, can enjoy uh, and that will really well define the different parcels at uh, on Buffalo's waterfront. So there'll be more to see, more to do, more investment and this public sector investment will stimulate even more private sector investment on Buffalo's waterfront which will create more jobs for the residents of Buffalo and Western New York and more things for us in Buffalo and Western New York to do but also attract more tourists from all across the country. Okay, great. And that's one thing that everyone's really dealing with across the country is this economic problem that we're having but it seems to me and it's it's money is coming here and um i'm sure we're going to be okay but we're coming down to the last four minutes of the show and i want to make sure you lead 
with your constituents what you want them to know? Well, you know, I want to say to uh, the people of Buffalo, first of all, thank you for their overwhelming support. Um, we work uh, every day uh, to make sure that Buffalo is a growing, thriving city. Our number one priority is creating an environment where businesses can grow and jobs can be created. Over the next three to five years, there are going to literally be thousands and thousands of new job opportunities created in this city. That's my number one priority. Mm -hmm. But we also want to improve the quality of life, you know, uh, through public education. We want to make our city safer. Working with people like you and George Johnson and the various violent pr violence prevention organizations, members of our clergy, uh, um, local law enforcement, uh, state, uh, federal law enforcement. Last year in 2011, we had the lowest homicide rate uh, mm -hmm. in Buffalo in 10 years. Wow. This year, by all of us working together, we hope to reduce those numbers even further. So what I want to say to people who are watching this program, uh, Buffalo is getting better. We're working hard, but we never stop working. We never get comfortable. We're going to keep working until we make Buffalo again one of the best places to live, work, raise a family, and visit in the entire country. Great. And you said something that's so important, we have to do it together. Absolutely. And if the community is not on board, if, if you're not part of the problem, you're part of the solution. So we encourage everyone to get on board. Mr. Mayor, Mayor we thank you so very much for coming out and explaining to us. Hopefully we can have you back at another time. And maybe next time we'll see Elder Evangelist Mother Sarah Vicker Hopkins in this seat. And you'll be seeing me during the upcoming uh, year. And we thank you for joining us for another segment of The Bottom Line. May you and your family have a wonderful, wonderful day. And may the glory of the Lord shine in, around, and through you. Make it a great day. God bless you.